Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Episode number 40, I don't even know, Gab. 41 or something. 41 or something like that. Um, Welcome back. We really appreciate you being here. Gab, how are you? How'd you sleep? Mate, I'm okay and I slept all right. Yeah. How, how did you sleep and how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Slept, uh, slept pretty well. Now, we know there's a bit going on with you at the moment. Yep. Um, and obviously, people who uh, can see the title, they, they, they can probably know which direction we're heading in for this. But I just wanted to kind of really emphasize as to why we're making this podcast today. Mm-hmm. So it's called 9 to 5 or NTF Breakup 2.0. Um, and episode 21 of the podcast, we made uh, NTF Breakup. Or, and, uh, and the response from that was really fantastic. It was in regards to a breakup that I went through roughly five months ago. Um, and, and we've had so many mes- messages surrounding it. So mm-hmm. um, we're making another one. Uh, we'll get into kind of your situation in a bit. But I just wanted you to kind of talk us through the response we had from the initial podcast from episode 21 and like the reason we're going to make this podcast today. I suppose it's a bit of what seems like a taboo topic there's not enough content on it even trying to source content out there yourself like there isn't that much helpful advice on there so i think for a lot of people it was something new having just some blokes chat about you know relationships and you know feelings and emotions and being yeah. upset and kind of the ramifications of that so i think a lot of people really appreciated it and got a lot out of it and we've had hundreds of messages from people saying how much they got out of it and it's for that reason we felt we should make another one and kind of use our experience to give people some sort of advice and yeah i think um a good indication of impact from a podcast is like like, so generally after we make a podcast we'll have impact for about you know a week or so or Mm -hmm. or like a month let's say um this has had just like episode 21 it's still going Mm -hmm. at at least once or twice a week i'll get a message from someone going through a breakup saying they've Mm -hmm. listened to the breakup podcast multiple times so um and then we also get emails as well yeah and i don't know if you want to read out this one i'll read this one out but this is just kind of an example of the kind of tone we receive from a lot of people and a lot of messages so it goes Hey fellas, I don't have a story, but I did want to spread some love your way. The previous podcasts you did on the topic really helped me get through some tough times that seemed Lewis and I were broken up with around the same time. I know we don't know each other, but it felt nice to hear that I wasn't alone during the healing process and everything I felt was justified. It gave me someone to relate to and feel connected to during dark times, especially as we were locked down. When I was down, I would just put one of the podcasts on and listen to it to help me through and i can honestly say it helps so much been meaning to write this email for a while and just say thank and just thank you for your down-to-earth chats and tips both for mental and physical health i've been grinding the past couple of months and it's definitely paid off as you both said it would keep doing what you're doing as it's definitely needed and appreciated spreading some love your your way fellas x cheers yeah so i mean like it's pretty amazing. Kind of gives me shivers the fact mm. we've been able to to cre- create something that that helps you know not just one person but multiple people and um, yeah. you know I think we've had plenty of messages lately saying you guys it uh, feels like we're your friends. Um, we might not know you, but we definitely are your friends, and hopefully we can mm. kind of spread some love and, and give some advice or or just talk about things along yeah. the way. And for you guys going through situations like this, you're not alone. It's mm. just that a lot of us men don't feel like don't really talk about it, which is why. We're putting ourselves out here in this kind of vulnerable position because, you know, we feel as though it needs to be spoken about more. And yeah, it's it's kind of, up, it's very upsetting for a lot of us. So absolutely. Uh, we're all going to get through it together. So let's get into it. Yep. Um, do you want to kind of give us a brief synopsis of, of like what you've been through in the last couple yeah, of weeks? Yeah. So I'm trying not to get emotional here. So <laughs> give me a sec. You're on. Take your time. No rush. We don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. No, I will. Just grab a tissue. Yeah, good man. All right, so, yeah, guys, over the past few weeks, I've been pretty flat. It's been a very upsetting process, but basically, girlfriend and I broke up, um, and, yeah, nothing else to say other than it's been really bloody tough. Like, Yeah. 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 And, and how long ago, roughly, was that? Yeah, kind of like a month ago now. Yeah. So, and yeah. that process... Has it, was it kind of just like a clean break? Like, is it, was it just Definitely, like- yeah. So, literally not an ounce of animosity towards her. I think it's the same my way, but yep. 
yeah, it's just tough. Like decision kind of came from her end. Yeah. Um, and over a few weeks, there was quite a bit of back and forth. Um, so in that sense, not really that clean. A lot of confusion, but mm. yeah, it was just real tough. And so like that initial conversation uh, you had where like it, it was a breakup, mm. how did you initially respond? Well, I mean, yeah, it's like upsetting and yeah. difficult to process kind of thing. And, you know, I don't want to get too specific, but it didn't kind of seem real. And that's why it was very drawn out and a lot of back and forth. Mm. Whereas now, like for a while now, I've just been accepting it, which has been the toughest thing. Yeah. And so like that process of accepting it, Mm. did that start? I mean, obviously, like how long didn't you think it was real for? And then when did you kind of, what forced you into that process? Yeah, probably two weeks just because of, you know, like back and forth and kind of open communication and things like that. and. I suppose I'm a pretty optimistic guy, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, when it initially happened, you were pretty optimistic, mm-hmm. kind of thinking this isn't going to... It's not like a, an actual breakup. Yeah. Um, and then kind of the hens come home to roost. Mm-hmm. Um, do you... When was kind of like that most difficult process for you? I suppose it comes in waves. Like, sometimes you feel unreal, like mm-hmm. you're ready to live your life. Um, you got all these things going for you, lots of things you can work on, really kind of channeling your emotion into other aspects of your life. Mm. Um, and other times it just, yeah, it's really tough. Yeah, yeah. So those like tough times, mm. do they mostly happen when you're with people, when you're on your own at night, in the morning? Mm. And then how do you go about kind of managing them? Because, you know, um, mm. I've seen you, like we can all see you on social media and stuff. You're, you're still going. Mm-hmm. Um how, how do you yeah how do you manage those tough times like what do you do well i suppose to answer the first part of the question it's quite quite random for me like mm. i can be with people and like the wave just comes on kind of thing yeah i suppose like a good escape for me is cycling i feel like when i'm punishing myself on the bike and it's painful you don't really think about it because mm. i don't know it's kind of like that runner's high feeling where it's like you're on top of the world and you know you're distracting yourself and it's awesome mm. but yeah yeah so what's been like the best so, sorry like the best thing for you is cycling mm. what's kind of helped you in that process of moving on is like like doing something in particular not necessarily cycling more like definitely just like recognizing your goals and where you're headed so zooming out and going big picture it's like yes this person was awesome to be with yes you may have seen like you know um perhaps long-term potential and stuff like that but like you're still going to achieve your, your goals regardless of that kind of thing. So yeah. like would like feel free to come along for the ride. But if you're not kind of coming on board, then the train's still going. Yeah. You know? So I suppose really zooming out and looking macro and going, look, like it sucks now. But like these feelings right now are temporary and mm. the goals in the long term is kind of permanent and nothing is going to kind of shift that momentum. Mm. There might be blips of ups and downs and things like that but yep and like the effects of covid so you're kind of doing something mm. most people you know like adults and stuff our parents have to haven't had to deal with which is yep. go through a breakup through covid mm. have you found that to be more difficult as such you can't really go out um and kind of distract yourself yeah because i know you've been through a breakup before mm-hmm. um you went to uh on exchange straight away yep uh that was probably good for the breakup. Yeah. This is kind of on the other end of the spectrum where you're forced the to opposite, sit. the opposite, where you're literally just, at the wall. Yeah. How have you found that? Yeah, a whole lot more tough. It's like you can only walk so many streets around you. Yeah. Um, and it's not the same as being like a completely different country with a completely different social group and mm. really immersing yourself there. So it's, it's so much tougher. Um, and it's really hard to kind of break those habits of you know talking to that person who was your best friend and your girlfriend kind yep. of thing so i suppose yeah being locked down is seriously seriously tough yeah how about the response of people around you have you noticed anything different the way people kind of conduct themselves around you have you found things anything in particular annoying like let's say mates are trying to set you up with their friends mm. or, or that kind of things i mean i know it's early on yeah um 
but yeah is, is there anything you can give there to be honest i'm quite selective who i'm kind of would allow to be in my support network and yep. all the people in there i really trust and i back their what they just like my communication with them so i'd say nothing's annoyed me it's just yeah i suppose you can get as much advice and as much support but at the end of the day you need to give these feelings the oxygen they need to breathe and mm. kind of burn out and nothing is really going to numb that feeling. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I suppose. Um, so, break up podcast, the, the first one, episode 21, we kind of talked about like grind really hard, get back mm. on the horse. And I do agree with all of that, but mm. I think there's a huge spot for grieving um, mm. and actually sitting down and accepting your emotions. Do you agree with that? 100%. Like... You can only distract yourself so much and the, I feel like the distracting yourself is kind of sweeping uh, sweeping it under the rug. Like mm. the feelings are still going to be there. Um, it's not quite as bad if you're just drinking away your sorrows and things like that. But yep. I definitely think there's a place for literally feeling those feelings and um, this is where things like mindfulness come into play where, you know, you're journaling um your, your thoughts and everything that's bugging you mm. and you're meditating and scheduling some sign that some silence and i think yeah those things really help out yeah yeah absolutely do you yeah kind of like tips and tricks i know you're early on for mm. a breakup but we've got people listening to this who are going through a breakup right now probably mm. same situation as you what what kind of tips and tricks can you give them yeah i think just you need to acknowledge that no tips or tricks are gonna make it a non-painful experience like it's it's gonna suck either way and you just need to accept that but yeah tips and tricks are just making sure you're busy and Mm. kind of working towards that long-term goal and you're grinding and really just backing yourself and loving yourself and because as they say like you can't love somebody else before you love yourself yeah um so yeah my tips and tricks are just yeah work on yourself and don't try to find someone to fill that void straight away you know yeah. just yeah. keep yourself busy and work towards your goals i've seen it like we're 23 um mm. so people younger listening to this people older listening to this um and we see a lot of people like relationship coaches coaches on on tiktok and mm. stuff and they've got like the draw the exact process of this yeah. is what you need to do to go and find like a wife or whatever yeah. and like i believe like all that stuff is really good but um, I think a really big one for people our age is to go and make your own mistakes. Mm-hmm. Don't you reckon? Um, yeah, like going out and making your own mistakes. If a mistake is... Often people say like never go back to the same person twice or like, mm-hmm. you know, there's no such thing as a split up and like you, can, you can't get back together. Mm-hmm. I think you need to make your own mistakes. What do you reckon? Yeah, I somewhat agree with that. Like no one feels the kind of feeling that you felt. I can say for me, like in terms of previous relationships and things like that i've never felt the same way kind of thing so it's like it's easy for someone to give you generic relationship advice where maybe the person fell out of love with them or they break up for different reasons and i feel like that can kind of be irrelevant or it doesn't kind of fit the mold so i think there is an element of making your own mistakes and as you know some really good advice that has been given to us is no decision is the right decision unless it's your own Mm. and like people can give you all the advice and i don't necessarily agree with people telling you what to do and you know whether it's parents or friends saying you need to break up with this person or do that like you only you feel the feelings that you feel and i think the only right decision is the one that you make yeah i couldn't emphasize that enough Mm. like that um that thing of making your own decisions and like friends and family around you are going to um, kind of push for you to do one thing or another. Mm. And it's because they are trying to help you. They're like, they see pain and they go, I want to, I want to help this person. Yeah. And the way I can help them is by telling them what to do. Yeah. So it's like, it comes from a really honest um, point of view. Uh, however, I reckon if you're not making your own decisions, you are going to regret it so yeah. much. Um, exactly right. You know, on down, down there. Often these people can have agendas of their own as well. And they might as, good intentioned as they may be and as much as you trust them and as much as they might have good advice for other things sometimes they might pressure you into a decision and you might be influenced by external sources and yeah i think you just need to acknowledge that and make your own decision and weigh up the yeah 
And also, if you are a friend listening to this, someone's going through a breakup. I mean, it's it's also a good good thing to take into account. I don't think giving advice is often like the best mm. the best way you can support someone. The best way you can support someone is just put your arms around them. You put, know? Yeah, and just I think it's, tell them you're there for them and understand. It's super common for people to go through a breakup um, and then they kind of start talking to their, their ex again and mm. stuff and then they go into their shell. Like, mm. fuck no, I'm not going to tell my mates that I went and saw my ex. Yeah. Because like the response you're going to get from that is almost like a punishment. So yeah. if you are a friend listening to this and your mate's going through a breakup, I'd highly recommend just, um, just supporting him. Put your arms and, around And him. just like a non-judgment zone as well. Yeah. I feel like just let them know you're there for them. That's one thing I've really appreciated from my mates is often through this process, you know, I don't want to talk to anyone. Yeah. And it's like, still like your mates are reaching out, calling you, asking you how you're going, even if you don't want to talk. Yeah. And often that can make you feel a whole lot better when you do tell someone about it. Like even mm. if you're in a very antisocial mood, so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So episode 21, we gave out a lot of advice and, mm. and it was really helpful advice for a lot. It seemed, as you could tell by the email earlier, I just wanted to kind of go back over and, and think, do you, like, do you remember much of the advice from, from the breakup? Probably. No, do you want to give me a refresher? It, I mean, I, I actually listened to, the, to it this morning. I'm kind of going blank now, but it was, it was kind of around, around the thing of like, we got to move on, like is what it is, mm. you know, throw your leg over and, and get going, move, mm. move forward. Um, it was very kind of like, you got to work to kind of push things out of the way and in two months you'll be right. Mm. I just wanted to go over that, um, being that we have the opportunity to do this on our podcast um, and just say, you know what, take your time, mate. Like, mm. don't, you don't need to rush things. It probably isn't going to take two months. At least I know like that from personal experience. Yep. Um, you know, it's a pretty drawn out process. Uh, mm. But then also during a breakup, everyone around you thinks they know best, which we touched on before. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I suppose with this one, if you're going to take anything from it, it's that every decision needs to be made by you. Yeah. Um, and you know that's that's for everyone. Don't uh, don't be swayed by by your friends and stuff, and and push people away for for a reason that you you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. And relationships can get toxic, and they they can yep. get like that. And you know that the saying is like a relationship is is kind of over six months too late, which I think is very pessimistic, and it's a horrible thing to think about. Mm. Um, but like it's understandable sometimes so yeah I, j- I just wanted to kind of go over that and, and touch on it yeah it's like for me it was very easy to give you advice about your situation mm. whereas like I'm following that same advice but it's and I am implementing as well but it's it's mm. hard yeah. like there's not nothing else to say other than it's hard yeah mm. absolutely and it's probably even harder if you got people like me around you saying, mate, do whatever you want to do mm. as long as you're happy. Yeah. Um, but I think that's better for the long term personally. Mm. So, yeah, wrap your, your arms around your mates and, uh, and look after them. Mm. Sometimes your mates have to lean, yeah. lean on each other every now and again. So, 100%. And now as someone that is a little bit further along through this process, do you have anything that you've learned throughout it? Yeah, I mean... Like I remember thinking it was going to be a two month process, mm. if that, and just kind of, you know, move on with it, a few tears and then move on. Um, I, I suppose like for me personally, and this is my experience, yours may be different. Um, it's, it, it's, it's kind of been a long process and something that I've just learned to deal with. Mm. Uh, I think there's probably some big effects in there from COVID. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, the, you shouldn't put a time frame on it. Take as long as you need. And uh, yeah, and and it'll all kind of work out, I suppose, is like the best advice or, or the best thing that I can recognize. Do you think there was a a milestone in there where you started feeling significantly better? Um, yeah, oh, not really, no, yeah. to be honest. Um, and, and, and just like you, you know, so that, that thing of um, you feel better mm. at times and then like you just feel shit. And that may happen mm. for you like 10 times in a day. Yeah. I suppose for me, it kind of happens in a, in a less frequent manner. Mm. That, that feeling of like kind of your stomach drops, can't eat. Yeah. Thing. So I suppose it's not like something where I just can wake up and be like, yep, all good now. Mm. It's just like something you learn to deal with and live with. Um, I have heard, however, from others that you will wake up one day and just be like, fuck it, you know, yeah. um, and I can't wait for that, mate, to be honest. And I definitely feel like, oh, for me on a previous one, 
it's kind of yeah one of the most significant ones there definitely was i could pinpoint the time when that happened for me yeah and that probably was two and a half months for mm. me but yeah it's i yeah as you say each situation is an individual yeah it's yeah there are, there's no rule book for it i also think like the bigger the love and the longer the love was for the harder the fall yeah and the longer it will take to recover absolutely as our mate Dean says. Yeah, he's got some great lyrics there. Some absolute crackers. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and you know, that like, you, so you went on exchange after a breakup. This is your, your first girlfriend. Yeah. Your, oh, it's, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, I won't get into technicalities <laughs> and labels, but. <laughs> you know what I mean. In case there's any so you went, people listening. <laughs> um, you went on exchange like the next bloody day. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, um, so man just moved on. Man forgot. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Uh, t- I'm not sure if I've disclosed what actually happened on in that situation to the podcast, but anyway, it was a nasty breakup. That yeah. one, there was a fair amount of animosity left on the table a lot of there. Damage. <laughs> um, a lot of damage <laughs> done. Whereas this one, no animosity whatsoever. Like that's that's what makes it so tough. Um, and yeah, literally moved on very like very quickly. Went to a new country and just yep. made it so easy. Whereas, yeah, as we say, lockdown here and it's bloody oh, mate, garbage. I was, I was in lockdown up at the farm at one point after the breakup and we had a storm come through. Mm. All the power was out and I just had to stare at my roof for mm. like literally two days. Like power did not work for two days. And I yeah. was like, this is shit. Yeah. This isn't facing your watching demons. Watching paint dry. <laughs> literally watching You're just also. forced to deal with your feelings there. No <laughs> hiding from it. What can I do? Can't go outside. But yeah, uh, but yeah so I don't know. What, what else do you have? Well, yeah, I just wanted to re-emphasize that, yeah, the point of making this podcast Mm. isn't to get a leg up on someone or to give attention to ourselves or to, you know, set the record straight or anything like that. It is to use our experience and let others know, like our followers know that they're not alone. And yeah, for us young people and people going through their first loves and young love and all that it's it's tough honestly Mm. and i feel like there's no helpful content out there apart from pickup artists telling you to do this and that (laughs) and buy my bloody ebook to you know get your ex back or something like that i feel like there's no good content out there so we just wanted to have a chat about it and Mm. also just wanted to say for for my situation no animosity towards the ex-girlfriend like genuinely wish her the best for everything and like kind of sucks that we did have to break up so yeah yeah that's basically my situation do you have anything you want to touch on with you yeah well i mean i suppose uh, like a lot the same uh in terms of like there's nothing out there um and it it sounds like a lot of people have come back to our podcast to um kind of listen to it uh through a breakup and we really do appreciate that and we are here for you um but yeah just kind of re-emphasizing those things of like every decision needs to be made by you Mm. um don't get toxic don't be a dickhead um but yeah i think making these podcasts help a lot of people and we do have a mailbag which we're going to get to in a second um but yeah just kind of good on you for doing this Mm. uh there hasn't been any pressure for me to for you to upload it by the way just Mm -hmm. for those listening um and uh yeah hopefully plenty can get it get something out of it yeah and just if you if you are struggling i think you just need to ask yourself like what is the big picture what are my long-term goals what am i working towards for us you know we've got uh an amazing bunch of followers an amazing community and we just want to keep creating and providing value out there and we've got some really big plans Mm. um coming up and it's easy when you're going through these micro kind of emotional blips to forget about that but you just need to back yourself and love yourself and keep working towards them and just acknowledge that these feelings are temporary and you're going to get through it like we promise you. Um, mm. Like for us, you know, we've got this business, it's doing well. We've been able to create all this stuff for ourselves. We're buying new cars, like no support from parents or anything like that, like a lot mm. of our mates are. Um, so like we, we do need to be proud of ourselves and it's easy to forget those kind of things that we have achieved and what we're working towards. So yep. for you guys out there, just back yourself and think long-term. Um, mm. uh, something pretty excited has happened. Um, we've just got a big podcast partnership. Yeah, we do. I don't know if we can announce it now, but we will announce it coming up. Mm. And so Louis and I have strategized and written down some goals and manifested a few things and one of those things was the podcast partnership and a few days later we get an offer so the next day literally next day so just 
we're going to keep manifesting and working towards these goals and yeah. getting through these emotions and you guys should do the same for sure um but yeah we we appreciate all the messages that's mm-hmm. uh, that's for sure and all, all your support should we get into the mailbag i think we should mate that now we do have to be quite selective about this because there was a lot of stuff in there yeah a lot of big stories so my suggestion was that we kind of break it up into two episodes so yep. there may be another one coming out for some of the longer stories and uh other scenarios and things like that so these are just shorter mailbag questions for the moment um we have multiple stories which we're going to read out and dissect for you guys um and just for this mailbag we're going to keep it completely anonymous mm-hmm. um just out of respect to the mailbaggers so mm-hmm. do you want to kick us off yep so obviously anonymous here but we've got do you think you ever really move on from your first love even if you find someone else question mark it's a good question Mm -hmm. um we spoke about it haven't we We, we, we've spoke about i think we're on two different kind of we we don't agree with each other i I hate you yeah what do you reckon for me i i've definitely i've definitely experienced that that you do move on i've had my first love like I don't want to get too specific here because it is private, but, you know, there's been people I've been with in the past who you might like and, you know, you kind of hang out with, but you don't love and it's easy to distinguish who you love kind of thing. Mm. And I think I've only ever loved two people and the first one I've definitely moved on from. Um, So, there's my answer for me. The yeah, answer yes. the answer is yes, you do move on. Good, mate. I think um, mine's kind of a yes and no. I reckon that, look, I'm sure you can move on, uh, but I feel like you're always going to have a kind of special place for your first love. Yep. Um, and like, I don't think it's like so debilitating that you can't find someone else, um, but it's probably going to be one of those things if you like hear that person's name, then your heart skips a beat. Yeah. Your stomach drops. Mm. Um, so I, I'm agreeing with you, but I'm also saying, I think it's something different to other loves, if that makes sense. For me, I understand what you're saying. Like the heart skips a beat, special spot. Mm. For me, I don't feel that. I know that I did love that first person, but Mm. for me, I, I don't feel that. Interesting. Yeah. So it is, it is strange how we're different. Yeah. Which is even more reinforces that there's no rule book for this. 100%. 100%. Yeah, 100% no rule book and each their own. Uh, sorry, we can't really give you a definitive answer, mate, but hopefully uh, that, that helps you in some way, shape or form. The next mm. question is how to communicate with an ex afterwards to talk about the relationship. Yeah. Which is interesting because I, like last podcast, this is actually another point I wanted to bring up earlier. Last podcast, it was like no talking to your ex straight up after like the rela- relationship's done, no second chances, we're not talking to our ex ever again. I don't necessarily agree with that anymore just Mm. from the point that you've been with this person for so long um i'm not saying you need to be friends but sometimes for a bit of closure it's really important Mm. to have a conversation yeah um so how do you do that i'd say number one communicate in in an emotionally neutral circumstance so obviously in the heat of the moment there's a lot of emotions flowing out some people might be saying things they regret You know, there's a lot of, you know, you're under the influence of emotions essentially. Mm. So, I would take a few days off to emotionally process things and really neutralize those feelings and that will help facilitate a mature and constructive conversation. From there, I think an in-person talk is always best if possible. I think text, you kind of detach any sort of feeling and emotion that can, like, I feel like you owe it to the relationship if you did really care about it that you do have that chat in person Mm. which can make things really difficult um or at least on the phone and from that i think that you go into it with a plan like what do you want to get out of that conversation um if you're going to be in there begging i don't think that's a, a productive conversation i think you more structure the conversation around you getting your closure and respecting the relationship for what it was and what i think is a good way to do it is write down a list of questions of things Mm. that you want to know and understand about the relationship so you can get the closure you need and kind of improve for next time yep 
I totally agree. If you're really struggling to not text your ex and it's too early in the relationship, what I recommend you do, write down the message in your notes mm. uh, and then every time you feel like texting you, say, all right, no, I'm just going to do it tomorrow. Mm. And every day, just keep saying, you're just going to do it tomorrow. Um, but how to communicate with them, I totally agree with you. I'd recommend instead of texting them, I miss you, maybe start with like, hey, how's things? Yeah. You know, like, or just like, hey, you know, it's been a while, I'll have to catch up kind of thing. Yeah. Be not, mature about it. Yeah, don't come in like so heavy-footed with the emotions. You know, I miss you. I want you back, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think. Although that's, obviously, if you drink, then that might be a different story. It might yeah, be something yeah. very easy to do. Yeah, well, get your mates to support you for that. Yeah. Say, boys, I might be uh, texting my ex tonight. Make yeah. sure I don't. And yeah. And then you can all have the conversation. Mm-hmm. What do you reckon? Yeah. So the next one is, what's the best way to overcome mental problems after a breakup? Yeah, good question. Um, so I think by mental problems, they might be yeah, like kind of health. like anxiety and depression type feelings. Yep. I uh, wish we had the answer. I wish we did. <laughs> um, we're not, I don't think we're qualified to kind of give you advice on yeah. how to overcome things like anxiety and depression. So if you are feeling those things, then definitely seek professional advice so a professional yeah um so that's another thing not spoken about enough is you know therapists and stuff guys you can reach out to them they're mm. literally there to reach out to uh you'd be silly not to um if you are going through something so um yeah we'd highly recommend going to a professional and you literally just sit down and have a conversation you're going to be right i think to comment on this question on how to overcome like those general feelings of sadness and things like that like I don't think you can completely overcome them, but you can do things to ensure that you're still productive and you're still moving forward and mm. things like that. So keeping busy, working on your goals, working on yourself, loving yourself, scheduling some silence and meditation and journaling and being mindful, catching up with mates. Um, yeah. I think that's a good way to overcome it. Cool. So the last question we've got in the mailbag is, how long does it take till you're happy again? If you find out, let us know, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, sheesh. I don't know. Well, that's the thing. I think it's so. Yeah. Happiness is such a an abstract concept. It's like, are you ever truly happy? What is happiness? Like, can you be happy one hundred percent of the time? Like, truly happy? I don't know. Mm. Uh, this sounds like a really depressing conversation, but. <laughs> Like there are times even in this really upsetting process when you're happy. Like mm. as you say, it comes in waves. Sometimes if you're absolutely elite, like you're going to conquer the world and you don't need that person. Mm. Yep. But other times you obviously don't. Mm. I think um, trying to connect your happiness to someone other than your ex yep. or something like that. Or if you're in a relationship, connect your happiness to someone other than uh, your partner. Well, I think, yeah, you you shouldn't connect the ha- your happiness to anyone your happiness should come internally yep. but i think obviously for me for instance like whenever i'd spend time with that person i'd be incredibly happy yeah but it's like that will just force you into old habits and you'll just keep going in the same circles mm. and so you do need to kind of break that habit and find happiness within yourself and start to break that habit yep said it perfectly mate mm. What do you do? You have anything else? Any final thoughts? I think we've put everything out on the table. It's been a really tough conversation to have. Yep, you've done well. Definitely, yeah, toughest podcast for me. Well done. Um, but yeah, guys, seriously, you're not alone. Yeah. And we go through this honestly. If if you're not upset about a relationship that's ended, then I think that's probably abnormal. <laughs> probably unlucky because it probably yeah. wasn't a fantastic relationship. Yeah. To be honest. Um, but yeah thank you guys so much for all the support Uh, I'm sure you'll send Gab a lot of love um, and I'm thinking we will do another one of these podcasts in the next couple of weeks uh, Mm. just because we've got so much content on this Uh, but yeah we'll we'll cut this one here and And yeah guys keep sending your stuff through Uh, obviously if you do send it we'll keep it anonymous particularly for this topic yep and yeah we hopefully this has been of some value to you guys thanks so much guys cheers bye